Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Wednesday of Holy Week, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to one another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today is Spy Wednesday, as they call it, and it's a focus upon Judas Iscariot and the way in which he was uh, uh, complicit in the betrayal of Jesus toward his crucifixion. And we had the uh, the whole account of Judas beginning on Monday kind of highlighted. On Monday, you may remember, we had the woman, Mary, uh, anointing the feet of Jesus with costly oil. And because of that, uh, Judas really pretended to be all upset because that money could have been given to the poor if they just sold that oil. And uh, the interesting thing is John made the editorial observation He didn't say that because he really cared for the poor. It's because he was a thief, that uh, he stole from the contributions. So that was Monday. Yesterday we had uh, John's account of the betrayal of Jesus. And again, we have the exchange with the morsel there in, uh, uh, in the upper room at the Last Supper. And the interesting thing is one statement that John made in that is that when uh, he took the morsel and ate of it. That's when Satan entered to his heart. And so there was a sense of resolve that, that elicited at that moment. He uh, may have been wavering. We don't know. Uh, all we know is that there came a moment where he finally said uh, to himself, I'm going to do this. And it was at that moment that Satan uh, really had a hold, a grip on Judas' life. Here in Matthew's Gospel today, we see that same occurrence, that same betrayal. And here we have it added that uh, when this announcement was made and uh, they went around, you know, all of the different disciples denying it, saying, surely it wasn't I, Lord, um, that uh, as Judas said that, Jesus said, you've said so. In other words, he again confirmed to Judas He knew exactly what was happening. So this is Spy Wednesday, the day before Holy Thursday, the day before the upper room. And so really it's the beginning part of this scripture that really highlights today. And that is that Judas Iscariot went to the the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So this again was Judas initiating the beginning of the betrayal. And by tradition, uh, it's believed that it happened the day before Holy Thursday. It happened on Wednesday, which is uh, what we're thinking about today. So it was today that 
Uh, we think about the fact that Judas was given 30 pieces of silver uh, as uh, payment for betrayal of Jesus. He sold him out. And what a, what a, a sad thing. At the same time, we remember the fact that what uh, the devil purposed for evil, what even Judas purposed, we don't know his purpose. Uh, he may have felt that some people think, for example, that uh, Judas felt that this was the way to force Jesus to really acknowledge and to be who he really is. That if he is betrayed and he enters into the hands of the Romans or even the hands of the chief priests, he'll be forced to really reveal in power and authority his Messiahship. So we don't know if that was on Judas' mind or if he just really had been disillusioned. Whatever reason, uh, he betrayed Jesus. And again, one of the things we have to remember that even though Scripture says what the devil or what um, man, uh, you know, purpose for evil, God has purpose for good. Here that Jesus makes the pronouncement, the son of man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Even though it's going to be purposed for good, still the idea of betrayal is uh, a, a sinful act. It would have been better if that man had never been born. So again, it is uh, something where in God's foreknowledge, knowing that Jesus would be betrayed, he used it as the opportunity for Jesus to enter into that journey of passion that took him to the cross. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, being Holy uh, Thursday Eve, you know, uh, the day before we begin the Triduum, just want to encourage you to really begin to sanctify these hours, these days, and use them to really purpose uh, that your heart would be one uh, on this journey with the passion of Christ. I'd encourage you again to just keep thinking about and reflecting upon um, his passion, but even today especially. Just looking at Matthew, if you would just turn to Matthew 26, just read it again for yourself and just maybe put yourself in that situation. Put yourself uh, in the temple area with the chief priests and watch as Judas comes in and watch the way in which he betrays the Son of Man. Join Jesus in the upper room with the disciples around the table as they're all reclining there and just think about being there and watching Judas actually make that decision and leave the upper room, knowing that he would be betraying our Lord. This is a, a powerful journey this week. Holy Week is always the highest, most powerful, most glorious week in the church. And we have to remember again what man purposed for evil, what the chief priest purposed in terms of getting rid of the Son of Man, getting rid of Jesus, was actually going to be used for the redemption of man and that we would be set free from sin by the passion and death of Christ on the cross. And then death being vanquished, he raises from the dead that we might know that we too have new life. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.